Hello and welcome to another screencast from the Light and Optics Unit. Uh, I am much more focused this time. No game playing. Science is important. Science. Although songs are fun. Science. Uh, we're going to focus a little bit on the bending of light. And what does it mean when we say light refracts? Have you, have you heard that term before? Refracts. We've talked about reflection. But what about refraction? Now. You know that refraction, reflection, sorry, huh? you know that reflection occurs when light bounces off an object. You can accurately predict the angle that it will come back at as long as you know the angle that it entered at. It's the law of reflection. But what happens to light when it moves from one medium to another? From, let's say, air to water? This may be a little tricky. So let's talk a little bit about what that means in terms of light movement. First of all, you have to understand what a medium is. A medium is a material that light can pass through. Air and water are the best two mediums examples that I can provide because light in our environment is constantly passing through one or the other. Air and water have different densities. We say that air is less dense than water because the air particles are further apart than the water. Water is more dense than air because the water particles are closer together than in the air. So different mediums have different densities. Okay. Now, refraction occurs when light travels from one medium to another. It refracts or bends. And this bending of light happens because the density changes. Are you with me so far? Different mediums have different densities. Different densities refract the light. Okay. Now, when we actually say refraction is happening, we actually say that the light is actually uh, changing speed as it travels from one medium to another. Um, like you moving from class to class, let's say from our room to the band room, you may exit our room very quickly, but as you get to different hallways, your speed changes. You slow because there's more students in the hallways. Okay, uh, Air has uh, less density than water, so when light suddenly hits a medium that is more dense than air, it changes direction. The analogy that I like to make about this is a marching band. Think of those beautifully decorated, very professional marching bands that march uh, in uh, football games or university crowds or anything like that. And these marching bands always have one person in the center, in the in the front, directing the, the band where they're going to go, and then row upon row upon line upon line of uh, people playing bands and carrying playing bands, car playing instruments and carrying flags and all sorts of stuff. Okay, and they usually march shoulder to shoulder. They are in sync and in line. Now let's pretend that they're marching down a football field, and they're all looking dead ahead, but nobody's really paying attention to the ground. And just off to one side of the marching band is very thick, gooey mud. Okay, and one musician on the end in the front doesn't see this mud and continues to trek right towards it and it starts to trek into the mud. Now because the mud is thicker or more dense than let's say the grass they were walking on, this person when they start to walk into the mud begins to slow. They're still marching, still marching forward, not looking down at their feet, but they're slowing down. And because they're slowing, the person next to them in line begins to slow too. And the next person slows, and the next person slows. All in the same line, they begin to slow. But what happens is, because the one person on the end begins to slow, consequently, every other person slows, and the line begins to curve towards the person on the end, or towards the mud field. This draws the rest of the line in towards the mud, and the next thing you know, the whole line is in the mud. Okay. Every line behind that in the band, every subsequent line, follows a line in front, and they too begin to curve or to trek towards the mud. Every line of musician is changed in their direction because of the medium change, from the empty, clear field to the thick, dirty mud. Now, if this analogy doesn't make sense, do you think of it this way? When a laser beam travels from, let's say, the air in the classroom into a fish tank, it strikes the surface of the water and is slightly slowed because the water is more dense than the air around it. So because it is slowed, it slightly 
changes direction or it refracts. And we see that bending of light. Okay. Temperature can actually affect the density, therefore affecting the refraction of light. If something is increased in temperature, let's say you increase um, water, okay, the water temperature, the particles gain energy, they move faster, and the water eventually becomes less dense. It goes from a liquid form to a gas form. Liquid is more dense than gas. A gas is the least dense. So if something is hotter, the gas particles, let's say, of water, it is actually less dense, and it causes light to travel faster through it. If we take that same container of water and begin to cool it, and we're cooling and we're cooling and we're cooling, and we cool it to freezing, okay? Something that is traditionally, except water, and we'll talk about that another time, traditionally, if something is colder, it is more dense, and light travels slower through this medium. So if you increase the temperature, particles travel faster, it becomes less dense. Light is super fast. If you decrease the temperature, something becomes more dense. The light travels slower through the medium because the particles are closer together. I hope that made sense. Okay. There is only one point, this is just a side note, there's only actually one point where light doesn't refract at all. And that is when the light ray strikes the surface or strikes the different medium directly on. So if you look at this example here, on the far left of each image, whether light is traveling from the air to the glass or from glass to the air, if it's directly on, from straight down or straight up, it doesn't refract. It's just one of those funny angles that, that doesn't cause any refraction at all. And the property of refraction is actually what Sir Isaac Newton observed when he saw his beautiful rainbow. Okay? When light passes through a prism, because of the density changes, this is a solid glass prism, the density of light is uh, different from the density of the glass. The glass is more dense, and because it's more dense, the light is spread out. It's refracted. And when white light spreads out or refracts, it generates a rainbow. Beautiful. Love it. This is also why when you're fishing or when you're looking at something in the pool, why something looks a little bit off. If you've ever gone swimming before and you look down on the water and you see an object, that object is never really in that spot. Okay, that's because when light refracts from the water, it bends and therefore the path of light that's uh, allowing you to see that object is bent and the object is traditionally closer to you than what it normally appears. You always go to reach out for the object because it looks further away, but it's actually closer. So this funny property of, of uh, light, the fact that light can bend or be refracted, is a very important principle that you need to make sure you fully understand. We're going to do a couple of demonstrations in class that hopefully will uh, solidify your understanding. But here's what you need to know. Light can bend, and it bends because of different densities and different temperatures of those mediums. Plain and simple. Okay? So hopefully that helps, and uh, we will see you on the flip side.